Today it was revealed by New York City's Mayor Michael Bloomberg that the surviving bomb suspect told authorities that he and his brother had intended to drive to New York with additional explosives that they'd built and planned to detonate them in Times Square. For more on the factors which might have led the suspects to radicalize themselves, I'm joined now by former co-chair of the 9-11 Commission, Tom Keane. I had you in my studio in December. You were talking about this process that the next threat to America would come from somebody who'd been radicalized on the internet. I wish you had not been so prescient, but it's exactly what you were talking about. I wish I hadn't been right. Now, as part of a report that Lee Hamilton and I chaired a commission for out of a bipartisan center, said first of all that was the greatest danger facing the country since our report on 9/11, and secondly that uh, this was going to happen, that, that somebody was going to be radicalized on the internet because we saw it happening. And, and in the case of Tamil and Sanayev and your understanding of this investigation, is it clear that somebody was deliberately radicalizing him through social media sites? Was he getting information from uh, violent Islamic extremists online? Or was it more something that went on inside his own head and he used the, media, the internet to get the means to implement his plan? Well, I think there's a, there's a combination of things. There are these sites on the internet where these loners, these people who are starting to get radicalized, get together. The communities of people, and we haven't been monitoring them well enough. And you get radicalized by these sites. It takes a number. There's plenty of time to intervene. It takes four or five years from somebody who becomes a radical. To, you become a radical once, but to, to decide to kill somebody, that's another whole step. And so it takes some time. We have time to intervene in these things. And, and so I think they were radicalized. I suspect they went for some, he went for some training home and then came back ready to do the plot. But the, but the Internet radicalization is a real problem, and it's a, it's, it's a problem we have to do much more about in this country. And even in terms of being able to go online and find out how to make a pressure cooker bomb, and he was, uh, we understand he went to this site, Inspire, which is an Al-Qaeda-affiliated site. How closely are we monitoring those sites, and who goes to them? I don't think we're monitoring them closely enough. I don't think we're cooperating enough with the internet, big Internet companies that we should be cooperating with, so they understand the dangers of this. I don't think the training is there for some of our law enforcement officials on the internet itself. I don't think we're intervening in communities where this is occurring to the, same, to the extent we should be. And now we will. I mean, I, I think we'll now do all these things, I hope, uh, because um, you know, it's a real threat. The, the, these are people who are in this country already who can move freely, can do the kind of things American citizens can do, and that makes them much more dangerous. And the fact, in a sense, that they are not affiliated with an organized terror plot, which is what we understand so far, mm -hmm. how much harder does that make it to track them? Well, it makes, makes it much harder. That's why you have to understand these Internet sites, that's why you have to monitor them. And you, ha you can have counter-radicalization, too. I mean, there are wonderful anti-terrorist people who are victims of these, of these things who could be on the Internet, countering some of these arguments. You can counter these, uh, these sites. You don't have to just accept what they say. And do you think in the case here, you might have been able to do something? I mean, were there steps that you can say along the way that were missed, clearly? Well, I don't think we did enough, but you can't say that. I mean, these people might have done, no matter what we did, they might have done what they did. But, but I, I don't think we're doing enough to really get after this, this kind of radicalization, this kind of homegrown terrorist uh, who can do these kind of, uh, uh, and, and I think we've got to. I mean, we've just got to do better. Tom Keane, who was the first, one of the first people to spot this online radicalization process, came into the studio to speak about it earlier, and unfortunately it does seem to be exactly what happened in this case. Thank mm -hmm. you very much for coming in to join us again. Thank you, Alan.